Hey everybody, Leo D here with another vlog, and in this vlog, once again, I invited Alex over. What up, everybody? And we're going to look at some comparisons uh, between a mobile DJ and a club DJ, and everything that you have to do leading up to an event, and some situations that happen during an event. Let's get into it. Bam! So in this vlog, we're going to take two different approaches. I'm going to speak as a mobile DJ, and Alex is going to speak as a club DJ. All right, preparing music for a night at the club. Um, preparing for a club and obviously preparing for private events are two completely different animals. Um, in my opinion, that's what makes a really good DJ a good DJ. Somebody that can set it aside and play completely one style at a private event and play completely different and party rocking at the nightclub. You have to download your music differently. You're able to obviously play dirty versions at the nightclub Obviously, at a private event, you only want to play clean edits of your music. As you get the grasp of being able to, to read a crowd, um, you'll automatically know what will and what won't work. Obviously, certain club edits will work at the club, and certain club edits will not work at a private party. A perfect example, when you are at a private event and a song is about to start, you would automatically start a song like this, you get a full 8-bar intro, and the song comes in normal. All right, when you're at the club, you're able to get away with something a little different and you can do this. So it's something with a lot of sound effects, a lot of very abrupt beginnings, and it's something where you're gonna be able to actually play the song and you're actually gonna be able to lower the music and have people sing it out, which you can also do that at a private party but it's on a different level when people have alcohol and people are having a really good time at a nightclub. It's a different environment. It's a completely different animal. When you're doing a mobile party compared to when you're actually preparing for a club, the big difference is that you have a specific client that you're catering your music to. And many times that client's going to give you some type of playlist, whether it's five songs, ten songs, or a hundred songs. And right then and there, you have your outline for the night. You, you have to go through and make sure that you have that music. You want to organize the music somehow in a playlist on your computer or on whatever device you're going to use. And most importantly, you have to make sure that Obviously, all the music that you're getting off that list is the clean version because most of the time most private parties are family oriented parties so you can't play any of the dirty versions. And secondly, you also have to worry about whether you have the versions of the song that the client has asked for. And nowadays there are five or six different versions of every song that is out there so you want to make sure that you're getting the Ed Sheeran and whoever else produced version of Perfect and not just the standard Ed Sheeran version of the song. Alright, so normally, I normally always go to the different record pools that I use uh, every week. So it just depends on, on what's coming out. I also am a member of a mass record pool which basically every time I get from them I get once a month and it's normally anywhere between like six and eight gigs of stuff and it's literally remixes from everywhere all over the world um, so at least minimum of once every two weeks normally though it's probably once a week um, sometimes I'll leave stuff in my downloads folder if I haven't downloaded a good amount and I'll just put the download folder every time I'm going to play into my prepare crate and then just go through it right there. Um, normally I'll wait till I get maybe, I don't know, say for like 40, 50 songs before they actually go into my hard drive and go into the Serato library. So as a mobile DJ, it really all depends on the event and how many events I have. The good thing about doing private events is a lot of times the 
uh, playlist that you get from a customer is very repetitive from one customer to the other. So as long as you have the majority of the popular music today, you're pretty much gonna have everything that's on the client's list. There might be a few songs here or there that you might have to go out and get, uh, and there might be some new music that you might want to incorporate, but most importantly is you want to make sure that you have what the client is asking you for. And based on that, you're probably already going to have about 80 to 90 percent of everything that they ask for, whether it's some type of oldies or brand new pop music. For the most part, you already have it, and you might want to just kind of sprinkle in a couple new songs here, or maybe some remixes here or there. But for the most part, I like to play just the original versions of the songs and that means I already have about 90% of everything that the customer is going to ask me for. Alright, so normally most nightclubs have equipment. Um, so normally it's just my book bag and that's it. Um, obviously with me, I'm the type of person I get bored very easily so whenever I do get bored, I'll switch things up so like the, the club normally has just CD players I normally always bring a mixer and depending on what mood I'm in is what mixer I'm gonna bring and or sometimes um, I'll be bored and I just want to use my controller so you know sometimes you know if I had an event the night before with my controller I'll bring the controller with me or in this particular instance this is what's gonna happen this week check it out so ladies and gentlemen this is the new rain 72 this mixer is the reason why Serato DJ Pro exists right now. They specifically developed this mixer to only work with Serato DJ Pro. You have endless upon endless of DJ creativity with it from being able to scroll through your library directly on the screen right here and you can automatically load it to actually being able to see the waveforms automatically on here and uh, you have your full library control right here as far as your crates you have effect controls so one really cool thing about this mix is that you can incorporate the built-in rain effects with the serato effects um, also on top of that you have your sampler right here you have two independent microphone inputs I mean the mixer is just a beast I mean, I've had it for maybe about a week now, and I still haven't, still discovering stuff that it actually does. So on a weekend like this one, I'll probably bring this out, and uh, that's the really cool part about it. There's no really right or wrong way when, you know, we're fortunate enough to be able to have access to different uh, setups. You know, this weekend I'll probably bring out this or one of my CJs, or maybe I'll be creative and bring this out and use one of my turntables. Or use two turntables, use three, it really doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way of doing it as long as you are comfortable with what is in front of you. That is the most important thing. The more comfortable you are, the better your performance is going to be. As a mobile DJ, it's up to you to bring out all the equipment for the most events that you're going to do. I would say about 95% of the events that I've done, I've actually had to bring everything. Speakers, amplifiers, mixers, music, and everything. That 5% um, actually is a growing trend that's happening here in South Florida. Some hotels and some venues actually have sound ordinances uh, where they have to control the volume. In order to have that control, what they've done is they... They force DJs to use their equipment. So you basically bring your control surface, whatever you're going to use to play your music, but you have to plug into their sound system and they control the sound. So that's about 5% of the time. So the 95% of the time, I'm pretty much hauling all my speakers, all my amps, all my controllers, and it's really up to me what I want to use based on the crowd and based on the type of event. Um, again, I have a specific system that I use for weddings, and it's not the same system that I use for private parties or for the type of event where I might want to do some turntablism or maybe where I want to just kind of be a little bit more of a showcase, so I'll use my CDJs. So it all depends on the event, but for the most part, as a mobile DJ, when it comes to gear, you're bringing everything. Most nightclubs obviously aren't busy at 9 or 10 o'clock at night when they open up. So I normally, um, what I personally do is, is I have a pre-made mix. 
which I normally play and that'll run for maybe first hour, hour and a half ish. Um, the particular spot where I play at, the music can be crazy loud just because it is a restaurant as well. So people are eating and stuff like that. They really don't want the loud music and they probably don't want to hear all the crazy stuff I play throughout the night. So I start off with just a, a mix. Mix basically is consisted of just a lot of recurrents, a lot of sing-alongs, all Latin because it's a Latin spot. So um, just a lot of recurrent, a lot of older stuff, stuff that people can just sing along to and just vibe to. It's not going to kick them out. It's not going to keep them there for the whole night. It's just something to pass on throughout the night. And then uh, once 1130 hits, we just turn up the volume and we just go in, you know, we obviously always want to start off with an impact, something where you're just going to punch them in the face. It's going to get everybody's attention, get on the mic, hey, it's time to get this party going, you know, etc, etc, etc. And we go from there and read the crowd and we just steer the ship in whatever direction we're going. So as a mobile DJ, it really all depends on the type of event that you're doing. For example, if it's a formal event, then obviously you have to go through all the slow parts. You have to go through the ceremony if you're getting that, if the cocktail hour, the dinner. And then once all that is done, once all the pomp and circumstance is done, then you get to the dancing portion. And usually the dancing portion is so small that you're really just, there is no build up there. Your build up has happened already through the cocktail hour and the dinner and people are just ready to sprint to the end. So you just start off with bangers from the beginning all the way to the end. For other mobile parties, like birthdays or corporate events, then you can do a little bit of slow buildup, maybe transition from one tempo to another tempo or from genre to genre. But for the most part, it, you're building slow and you're working your way up. Again, it all depends on the type of event that you're doing and if there's any kind of slow portions where uh, some type of private party there or some type of gathering, there might be dinner. So the client might tell you slow the music down or lower the music down. So you got to kind of bring it down tempo a little bit there. So you have that variable built in to mobile events. All right, so it, it all depends. You know, if it's something that it goes with what we're playing at the moment, so if I'm playing this right now, I don't quit you. And you come up to me and you're like, hey, can you, you play this? Sit down. No, that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna be like, all right, cool, I got you, not a problem. But yeah, that's not really gonna happen. So it really just depends on on what the request is. If it's something that we have, I'll definitely I don't have a problem playing with it, you know, as long as you know sometimes they might have to give me if it's a different genre, I'll be like, hey, just give me like five, ten minutes, I'll be able to squeeze it in for you. Just give me a little bit, I got you. But if it's something where it's out of left field, and if they seem like they're not a very nice person or they're gonna basically annoy you and or bug you until they until you play it, then most of the time in that particular situation, I'll just tell them, hey, look, I'm sorry, I don't have the song. So at a mobile party, one of the things that I do before the event even starts, back when I'm in the initial conversations with the client, I ask them, how do you want me to handle requests? And right there, I get my instructions from them on whether it's up to me, whether they say yes, take all requests, or no, take no requests. Once the event starts, if somebody comes up to me with a request, I kindly say, okay, depending on what the client told me, yeah, I'll get it in there. No, I can't play it or let me see what I can do. I'll try to squeeze it in. Many times at private events, these type of requests do give you the temperature of the crowd because obviously, because you've been leading up to the dancing portion of the night, you haven't really had a chance to really read the crowd. So the initial request that you might get when the dancing starts can help you because they'll kind of steer you towards maybe where the crowd wants to be as far as the type of music that they want to dance to. When they're getting tired, um, ideally, the most logical thing would be to switch up the genre. So if you are playing hip hop, play some R&B, or if you're playing reggaeton, play some salsa or some bachata, and basically give people, you know, a five, 10 minute window to go to the bathroom, do what they gotta do, or go to the bar, or just sit down and just relax and enjoy themselves as they sing along to the different genre of music. So as a mobile DJ, it really all depends on the type of event and the length of the event, 
right? So if you're coming in and you get to the dancing portion of the night, you want to spread out your hits throughout so that you have enough high energy, a lot of good bangers to get you through the night. But what eventually happens is, and because there's such a mix of a crowd at these type of private events, you have your people who are gonna dance regardless of the type of music, and then you have your couples or you have your guys and girls that like the music, but they're still sitting at the table, they're wildflowers, they're holding on to the wall and stuff like that. So take advantage of slow portions to play a slow jam. Get everybody out as couples into the dance floor and that gives the dancers a break, a chance to get some drinks and that gives the opportunity for the shy people or the ones that uh, only want to dance with their couple or the older crowd that you know they're not going to dance to the popular stuff they really want something a little bit low tempo so a couple slow songs one or two at the most gives everybody a nice little break a little change in genre and then you can build the tempo back up and get everybody back up to speed So for this last question is the one that really messes with every DJ's mind. And that is, what happens if you're at a club or you're at a mobile event and the club's just not filling up or your mobile event, people are there for a certain amount of time and they just leave. Uh, a good example of this mobile event type of event is where a, a wedding, um, they're there, once the cake's cut, the food is served, everything's done, all of a sudden the dancing starts and your 150 person crowd turns into 20. That by far is every DJ's worst nightmare. Like there's no, there's no backup plan. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing, there's no way you're gonna be able to go like this and drag back in the 75 people that left and get them back in there. You know, unfortunately, that type of stuff happens. There's no way around it. There's, it's not something you might have done wrong. It's not something you might have done right. There's nothing you could have done. You know, sometimes, unfortunately, in the club or in the private event um, field, you know, certain parties just, they're not dancers as far as on private events, you know, certain parties, you know, their, their, their guests just don't like to dance. And with that type of stuff, it is what it is. You know, you stay to the format, you stay to what the client asked you to play and you just continue to play the bangers and you know, it's gonna happen. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Yep. One of the things that I find that I end up doing when this happens is I try to find the sing-along songs, the ones that pretty much, you could actually sit down and reminisce and think and say, oh yeah, I remember that song. I remember that song because when that happens, it kind of deflates the room. Uh, and again, like Alex said, it's something that's totally out of your control. It's just some people just don't dance and uh, that that's happens. And at clubs, uh, you can't really control the door. Uh, you can only just ask people to show up and say, hey, come out, see me, come see this, come see that. Here's the drink specials. But you know, unless you're actually dragging a busload of people into the venue, uh, frankly, there's only so much you can do to get people in the door, um, you know, so if they're not coming, they're just not going to come. As you said, I mean, I'm a firm believer, it is what it is, you know, you can't physically throw them in there, you know, if they don't come out and it's a slow night, you know, it is what it is, I said, still do your job, still do your performance, still rock it out, and you know, the 30, 40 people that came out, Make them have a good time. You know, it's, at the end of the day, that's what it's really all about. You know, we're here to entertain the crowd. That's what DJing is all about. So that's one of the main reasons why I'm in it. At the end of the day, if I can make somebody's night and play their favorite song and have them sing along, or, you know, if we can play a certain set of songs and, you know, we create couples, you know, we've created anything from couple, we've created everything from couples to marriages to babies. You know, DJs do it all. That's what's special about them. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing that I like to do, especially if the crowd's dwindling, is I try to play stuff that I want to hear. Uh, as long as it fits within the genre of the event or anything like that, that's very important. <laughs> I take advantage 
of you know might play some obscure song but it's something that I want to hear maybe it's something you know especially at a club where I might just kind of put some, some throwbacks and just kind of have fun with it because at that point what are you gonna do I mean the crowd is very small and you know you can't control those kind of things so once again I want to thank you for watching the video uh, if you like the video please give me a thumbs up uh, I know Alex a lot of people have asked me how to get in touch with you so if they want to look you up anywhere where would they go social media at DJ Big Al one at DJ B I G A L the number one so once again thank you for watching the video if you liked it please subscribe give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and uh, talk to you later peace out